Welcome back to RFL. Let's bring it back home to New York, where after a rough week following the Westchester Ebola scare, Governor Cuomo's Republican challenger, Rob Astorino, is finally getting a boost. He's getting that boost from a Bush. Jeb Bush is now soliciting campaign donations for Astorino, and the Westchester County Executive is also being backed by conservative Democratic State Senator Ruben Diaz Jr. The latest Q poll shows Governor Cuomo with a 20-point lead over Astorino, and surprisingly, Green Party candidate Howie Hawkins has 9% of the vote. Meantime, next door in Connecticut, Democratic Governor Daniel Malloy is in a dead heat with Republican businessman Tom Foley. The latest Q poll shows a 43 to 43 percent deadlock among likely voters in the nutmeg stake. Foley is being backed by New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Last night, Malloy and Foley faced off in another debate, both contenders with their gloves off. Governor Malloy was recently named the worst governor in the United States of America by a prominent national journal. The biggest empty promise we've heard, Governor, uh, is your promise not to raise taxes before uh, you were elected in 2010 and then you put the largest tax increase in, in Connecticut history on the citizens. Absolutely. The reality is, is that, that I said that raising taxes would be the last thing I would do and that I would not cut the safety net and I have not cut the safety net and raising taxes was the last thing I did do. So this brings to mind a question and Bill, uh, uh, Full, Connecticut and New York are fairly similar states in terms of ideology and, and in a number of ways. Why is Foley doing so much better against his incumbent Democratic governor than Astorino is doing against his, at least in the polls right now? It could be because they're holding debates. I mean, they're, have, they're having seven debates, seven televised debates in Connecticut. <coughs> Last night was the fourth of the seven. Um, we've had no debates whatsoever in New York State. Um, it's interesting, though, in that race, like I think if that, if that race were to be held today, Foley would win that. You have to look at the incumbent's number, not at the challenger's number. And at 43, most people have decided where the, what, what they know about the incumbent. At 43, he's not going to go that much higher than that at this point. <coughs> Governor Cuomo is only at 51 after spending a quarter billion dollars in both taxpayer dollars and those Startup New York ads, and then about $20 million in negative ads in Astorino. He's only at 51%. He's dropped 20 points. So we're actually encouraged by the poll that came out this week. We're not so worried about our number, but we see him at 51. He drops below 50, and we think he will. He's vulnerable. Dominic, uh, Cuomo must be getting some support from independents and from Republicans, too. I mean, certainly public support he's gotten from across the aisle as well. Is, is it just that Cuomo, you think, has a firmer grip on New York politics than maybe Malloy does in Connecticut? Well, one, there's a sense that Mr. Cuomo's victory is inevitable, mm. that he's going to win. Uh, he's a national player. Uh, Governor Malloy is not, and I don't mean that as an insult. Um, and Mr. Cuomo has the political legacy of his father being a Democratic icon. So that sets up everything for the son to have a much stronger position, if you will, uh, than, than the governor in neighboring Connecticut. All of those are factors why I think Cuomo's doing well and he's going he's gonna to continue to do well. And no offense to my colleagues, Governor Cuomo is going to cruise to victory. TJ, there is one difference between Governor Cuomo in New York and Governor Malloy in Connecticut. Malloy <clears throat> raised taxes. Cuomo, uh, to the, you know, to, to the anger of a lot on the on the progressive left, has not. He did, especially well, especially not upper end taxes. He, he Cuomo did raise taxes. He did. He, he, he broke his he pledge to raise taxes. He rejected yeah. the millionaires tax. Which taxes are you referring to? Because he, he put a tax cap in as well. No, he did. The, he actually did the millionaires tax. The millionaires tax. He did the two fifty and over. Yeah, and it was and it was meant to expire. Which but is not it's millionaires. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars, by the way. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah. The, the, the millionaire was just a catchy thing to get it through in the first place, and it was supposed to be temporary, but it's been made for the most part permanent. It's, it's back in. It's back again. For it was just passed into the last uh, budget, so it's it's still there. New York's a very interesting place where in in the city people want to raise the rent regulations mm -hmm. so that you can make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and be poor enough to have a rent stabilized apartment. But once you make two hundred fifty thousand and one dollars, you're considered a millionaire. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy state, the, the yeah. semantics of it. There, there's another <coughs> difference in both races right now, and that's on the national level. Uh, Foley in Connecticut is getting the help of the RGA led by Chris Christie, the Republican Governors Association. Right. Rob Astorino is not. <coughs> that's right. Does that kind of thing make a difference in putting together these it, races? It, it does, because what they are in, uh, in addition to funds coming in from the RGA, the RGA can signal to funders around the country that this race is on, and they put the race in there. The Astorino campaign is getting help from uh, uh, Governor Jindal is coming in next week. Uh, Scott Walker came in. Um, uh, Rick Perry came in. Jeb Bush is doing something. We're getting help from uh, Carly Fiorina as head of Women's mm -hmm. for Astorino, but not from Chris Christie, the RGA chair. 
Um, we've had some speculation about what that's about. Um, we're, we're a little bit uh, suspicious on that front. Um, but yeah, it, do, it does make a difference. And when you have a governor at 51, 25 days out, who's dropped 20 points and who's under federal investigation, for the RJ not to be interested is really uh, kind of perplexing. You agree, TJ? I do. I do. It's, it's especially when, when a lot of what these numbers say is that uh, it, it would have been one thing if he didn't move the needle much. But as Bill is saying, he's going down. He's going in the wrong tr after nearly a quarter of a billion dollars in negative ads. Uh, and uh, it also shows that people are not emotionally invested in, in Andrew Cuomo. People are not beating down the doors to come out and vote for this guy and support him. He's not anybody's guy, you know? Right. Do these kind of endorsements make a difference in the numbers beyond the fundraising? The fact that Jeb Bush is endorsing Astrino, does that help Astrino in any way other than raising money? It helps, but not that much. I mean, I don't think endorsements matter that much. And endorsements <coughs> really matter when you're a complete unknown. And Astrino's gotten better known in the state. He's, he's pretty well known in, in, the, in downstate New York. But if you're a total unknown and you get a Rudy Giuliani or, a, or a President Obama or you know, Hillary Clinton comes in, that certainly gives you a boost. But when you're in the throes of a campaign, it, it doesn't matter as much. But it's certainly helpful for the fundraising. It's a sign to other fundraisers that, hey, if you know, Jeb Bush is willing to jump in here, maybe I should too. Uh, I like these guys, but the answer is no. <laughs> to, to answer, <laughs> to you're answer still mad your about question. the Obama comment? <laughs> uh, maybe, perhaps. A teeny, teeny bit. I know. I'm only. I know. I know. Hey, um, when you have a Republican, <laughs> he does a good impersonation of you, by the way. He does me too. But, but, <laughs> when, <laughs> That's but, nice, but when you have a. It's the power of incumbency, Andrew. When you have a Republican like Ed Mangano, Long Island, doing commercials for Cuomo, that's a benefit. Yeah, that's because his, his county's under financial control board. He, Cuomo's his boss. He has to endorse him. Okay. He didn't right. have Chalk to. that up to, <laughs> he no, he didn't have to. That up to yeah, the bully. Yeah, Chalk that up to the bully factor. Speaking of really, you, to break wait, wait, wait. Again, you really think that, that Cuomo bullied Mangano into doing an endorsement for him? Absolutely. He oh, bullied him? Absolutely. absolutely. Remind me to hire these guys if I ever run for office. <laughs> but to, to finish. Well, you, you know what? And, and, and it's, because it they, speaks they, to why people are because, not emotionally okay, invested but, in this guy. There is very, wait, there is wait, nothing wait, wait, wait. likeable. If they're not emotionally invested in Cuomo, then what are they for Astorino where polls show that polls don't know who the he people, is? People, people don't know who he is. The people, go ahead. The five that are supporting him? We, we, ha we have so many, we have real people supporting him. We have 7,800 donors at this point. They're 25 and $50 donors. 80% of Cuomo's donors are over $10,000. They're not real okay. voters. They're big corporate okay. interests. But the reason why, just to answer the question, it's not good when you bring Jeb Bush to mm -hmm. town and other Republicans. In this state, in New York State, in Democratic Blue New York, it's yet another reminder that Mr. Astorino is not a Democrat and that he's a Republican. So it's counteractive. He needs the money, so he's got to do it, and I, I understand that. But it's another reminder that he is a Republican Pe and it works against them. People want principled leaders. People, you have, you have a certain segment of the vote that is just Democrat or just Republican, but the overall, the average person wants a principled leader that stands for something. And they'll take a Republican who's a conservative Republican and a, and a firm one that stands by his guns, they'll take that. We'll get crossover Democrats what, and independents. One final question, the, the crossover endorsements, Mangano endorsing uh, uh, Cuomo or Diaz cro uh, endorsing Astorino, do they matter? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, tell us about Ruben Diaz. I, I, I like Reverend Diaz, but if you're running for governor, do you really want to hold him up and say this guy's endorsed my campaign? I mean, if you're Cuo Cuomo, may run commercials showing that Diaz has endorsed yeah, Astorino. Re Reverend Diaz matters to the Astorino campaign more in the Latino community than than the fact that he's a Democrat. And Rob has spent a lot of time in Latino churches, uh, in, in, in neighborhoods. He speaks fluent Spanish, and he's done that for years you and years and years. you got to give Astorino credit for that. This sure. guy, and African-American community. And this he did guy in Westchester, go, too. He can go into a black community with no problem. He's comfortable. Astorino. And you know what gives him even yeah. extra he can credibility? He go into a Latino community. It matters. And what gives him extra credibility in that <clears throat> regard is that he, when he goes into those communities, he goes in there with the exact same message. Rob Astorino does, does not go in and he does does with. He doesn't he does. go in and tailor. I'll give my, my, my Latino my uh, speech, stump here or my black speech there. He doesn't and put on his accent like we've seen so like Democrats famously do on the Joe, national Joe Biden, level. Yeah. Okay. Rob Astorino goes in with the <laughs> same message. There is no condescension and no pandering. And that alone makes him a better, more credible As man. As I said, than Andrew, Andrew, he Cuomo. will be governor perhaps one day, but he's got to get that 800-pound gorilla called Andrew Cuomo out of the way first. 25 we, days. We shall see. We shall see. Up next, a court strikes down one of the toughest voter ID laws in the nation just ahead of the midterm elections. So will that move send a message to other states across the country? Surprisingly, one of them is in our region. Stay with us.